In this tutorial, we're going to use Illustrator CC 2020 to go through Classroom in a Book. Uh, the quick tour, which is here at the beginning, where we're going to create this cute little nuts and squirrel boutique um, element. Helps you kind of get an idea what you can do in Illustrator. So let's go ahead and make sure we're in Illustrator. Let's go ahead and do a File New. Um, make sure you have downloaded the um, assets from Google Drive. Let's go ahead and call this one Boutique Art. You don't necessarily have to do this part. B O T I Q. All right, our width is 11 inches, our height is 9 inches. Um, and that's all we need to do. So let's go ahead and say create. So we're going to go ahead and create the new one. Let's do a file. Let's do a save as. Go ahead and put it in your folder for 00. zero. Let's do a first initial, last name, underscore, Adobe Illustrator, class arena book, uh, lesson 00. zero and dot AI is just fine and say save and you're gonna get a pop-up and say yes okay alright so let's make sure we're all working from the same place let's go ahead and go into our window let's go into workspace and make sure we're working on essentials so we'll have the same thing and I also want to go ahead and show my rulers so I'm going to go up to here to my properties panel to rulers and guides and click to show rulers so I can kind of get a good idea I'm going to go ahead and grab a guide, so I'm going to click and hold over in the rule over here. I'm going to go ahead and put it at five and a half, so I just kind of have a good idea what we're uh, working at. And we are nine inches tall, so let's go ahead and put one at four and a half. So you can get kind of an idea. Those can be hidden later on, but it gives you a much better idea as you're trying to center things and uh, move things along. So let's go ahead and do a control S and save what we've got so far. Let's do a view and your fit your artboard in window. So we fill the whole window. And let's go ahead and grab a rectangle tool over on the left hand side. We're going to go ahead and draw a rectangle that's about 10 inches by 7 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and pull down. If you see, uh, you've got your cues down there on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and go 10. If it's not perfect, you can always fix it later. You can go about 7 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and let go. If I want to, I can go ahead and make that height right here 7 inches. I can make this exactly 10. So you can go through and fix it. Um, now I want to go ahead and make it just a little tiny bit bigger. So we're going to go ahead and all of our shapes are called live, which means we can edit them without switching away. So as long as we stay on this one, we should be fine. So let's go ahead and drag down and take it down to about 8 inches. So it's a little bit bigger. And I missed it a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and type 8 over there. I'm also going to use my arrows to nudge that just a tiny bit so I can kind of see in my guides that I'm nice and centered. All right, so now let's go ahead and we can drag this guy from the center, and it'll automatically move some of those things for us. So it's sometimes it makes it a little bit easier. So there's a few different ways to move elements. All right, so the next thing we want to do is kind of round these edges out. So we want kind of a nice rounded corner. So if you go to the kind of the bullseye here, take the bullseye and click and pull. And we want to pull it in to about 0.7 to get a nice rounded corner. doesn't have to be perfect. All right, and because uh, we did one, it did them all at once. So let's go ahead and do a control S and save what we've got so far. All right, so let's go ahead and add some color to our cute little box here. So we're in properties. Let's go to fill. And let's make sure you fill your in swatches, which is the first one. Uh, so you can see those. And let's go ahead and grab kind of this funky orange. Let's grab kind of the second one here. I'm just going to go ahead and fill that with orange. And if we double click it, we can then change the color of that shape. So I kind of hate the orange. So let's go ahead and make it a new color. Let's go cyan 9 magenta 7, yellow 9, black 0. So we're going to make kind of a tan color. If you push preview, you can kind of see what color we're making. I don't necessarily want to add it to my library, so let's go ahead and say OK. And I can hit Escape to hide my swatches panel. So usually you can hit Escape to get rid of some of those panels. Let's go ahead and play with the stroke a little bit. So let's go to our stroke color box. 
And this time I want to make my own color. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the, hit the color mixer. In the color mixer, I want cyan 80. I'm going to make kind of a funky blue. Um, my magenta is going to be 39. My yellow is 29 and my black is 3. So if you had wish enter, we'll go ahead and add the, uh, close that panel down. So let's make sure we save this color. So let's go ahead and go to our, oh, we should have done something different. Let's go to swatches here at the top. So open it back up, hit your swatches, and we want to go ahead and save that swatch. So do this one says new swatch. In the book it says to hit the post-it. The post-it's pretty much the same thing. Um, as the plus and say okay so now we've got that new color as we know it's that new one that we added because it's got kind of the clipped off corner right there all right so now let's go ahead and mess with our stroke itself I'm gonna click on the word stroke and I'm gonna get some different options I want my stroke weight to be three I'm gonna go ahead and make a dashed line on the first dash thing I want it to be three points I'm gonna go ahead and push tab for the gap and I'm not going to uh, mess with anything else. And I am um, pretty happy with it. So let's go ahead and do escape and hide that one. Let's go ahead and look at our layers. Layers allows us to overlap things a lot easier in Illustrator than it does um, as in not having them in layers. So you definitely are going to use layers quite a bit when it comes to Illustrator. So let's go ahead and double click this one called Layer 1 and name it Background. And hit Enter. And if I hit my down arrow, I can see that I've got my two guides, so I can hide those easily with my eyeballs. And I've got my background here, on, or my rectangle here on that background. Let's go ahead and add a new layer down here at the bottom. So create new layer. We're going to create the new layer, and it did layer two. So let's go ahead and double click it and name it content. And we're going to go ahead and we're adding our content. That way you can hide and work on things separately um, much more easily. So let's go ahead, hide background, and make sure we're on that content layer so that we're working from the content layer moving forward. So we want to go ahead and add the word boutique here to the bottom. So let's grab our type tool. And we're just going to go ahead and click, and you're going to get lorem ipsum, and that's okay. Let's go ahead and type the word boutique, B-O-U-T-I-Q-U-E. All right, now let's go ahead and do an ed a select, and we want to select all, so it's going to grab all that text for us. Let's go ahead and grab our properties panel. Let's go to our fill box. And in our fill, let's go ahead and grab that blue that we made in the previous step. And let's make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and come here to my character panel and my properties, and I want it to be 52 points. I'm going to hit enter, make it nice and big. And now I want to do a few other things. So maybe I want to try a font that I don't necessarily have. I'm going to go here to where it says Minion Pro, Myriad Pro, and do Select Font Family. I'm going to go here to Find More. Find More is going to go ahead, and you need to be uh, connected to the internet for this to work. If you're not, it will not. So it's initializing and looking for those um, different elements. While it's doing that, we want to go ahead and look for Montserrat. So I want to still initializing. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to Montserrat. And you'll see that some of these have a arrow, so we know we can expand it further. So I can spell. So if I just do Montserrat and do the click the arrow, I'm going to install all 18 different versions of Montserrat, which I don't necessarily want. So I'm going to go ahead and do the down arrow, and I want to go ahead and make sure that I do the Montserrat light. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the down arrow so it will go ahead and activate this font. So go ahead and say yes. All right, so then I want to go ahead and go into my fonts, and I want to go into my show activated fonts list and it might take a little bit but we do want to go ahead and get that Montserrat and we want light so I'm gonna go ahead and click that in there then I want to go ahead and play with a few other things so let's go ahead and open up that character a little bit more with the three periods the more options maybe 
All right, and here we want to go ahead and play with the tracking, which is the space between the letters. It's that V slash A. And let's go ahead and make it 300 so it's nice and big and hit Enter. And I want to make it all caps, so I'm going to go ahead in my More Options again and do your all caps right here. So it's going to go ahead and make that all capitals for us. All right, let's do a select and a deselect and do a control S and say what we have so far. So we have the word boutique and we have a background, but we're hiding it. The next thing we're going to do is draw a acorn. No, your acorn does not have to be perfect, but we're going to do our best. So let's go ahead, go to our rectangle tool and we're going to go ahead and grab the ellipse, which is right under the acorn. And we want to draw a ellipse that's about 0.5 by 0.3. So you can kind of see how it's going. It's not going to be totally perfect and that's fine. Last time I did this, it looked like a strawberry. All right, so I've got it turned blue because blue is what I had uh, most recently. I don't necessarily want it blue, so if I hit D, it's going to do the default, which is a white uh, fill with a black stroke to that shape. So it makes it a little bit easier. Let's go ahead and go to the stroke. And let's go ahead and make it a new color. So let's click on the stroke color. We're going to want our color mixer so we can make a new color. And we're going to go cyan 15. And go tab magenta 84, tab yellow 76, tab black is 4. I'm going to go ahead and click out, and it's going to give me kind of a funky orangish red color. And let's go ahead and make it just a little bit bigger, make it two points. So now we have the first part of our stem. Next thing we want to do is grab the little, uh, we want to make a rectangle, and we want to kind of draw the stem part. So you're going to make kind of a funky tomato looking element. Um, it's not perfect. I'm going to do a control plus and zoom in a little bit. Hold my space bar so I can use my hand. I'm going to go ahead and grab that bullseye and bring it in so I can kind of round those corners so I can make it more of a stem looking shape. And let's go ahead and make sure we grab our selection tool and kind of make sure that those are aligned up and down. So you get that magenta bar that's going to pop up, so you get a much better idea. And now let's go ahead and drag select both elements so we can uh, create one single shape. So right now it looks a little bit like a bobber. It's not supposed to. Uh, let's go ahead and we're going to use the shape builder. The shape builder is about halfway down the tools bar. And with that shape builder, it's going to allow us to um, create one single shape. So what we're going to do is we want to combine these two parts together. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold shift. We're going to drag from here down to the bottom and you'll see that it made it one kind of UFO looking shape. So that's what we want. So now we're going to go ahead and draw the bottom part of our oh, our acorn. So we want to grab the curvature tool which is about the second one down. We want to go ahead and click to s as a kind of a start spot and then we want to come down to make kind of a V, and you notice as you go up, depending on how you go out, you're going to get that curved line. So you've got kind of a curve so far, and then I'm going to go ahead and come over here to the other end and close that off. Ooh, that's ugly. So now I have one completed curved mess, but it's okay. We're going to fix it. Uh, the next thing we want to do is go ahead and make these into some corner points. So let's go ahead and right here, double click, make it a corner. Let's double click here and make it a corner. So now I kind of have a, a half a circle. And no, mine's not perfect and I'm okay with that. Acorns aren't perfect. All right, so now we want to go ahead and transform our artwork just a little bit. I'm going to do Control minus and zoom out. Whoa, way too fast. And I'm going to make this not look like so much a bobber and a little bit more like a top of an acorn. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my eraser tool. And you can change the size of your eraser with those square brackets by the P. And I'm going to go ahead and just erase through the bottom. 
Oh, I need to control. I need to escape and make sure I'm not on my other tool, my other other shape still. So let's go effect, or select and deselect. All right, now we've got our eraser tool because before I was still on my bottom of my acorn. So let's go ahead, grab our eraser and drag it halfway through, and you're going to get kind of a shape that's cut in half. So I'm going to go ahead and erase the rest of that bottom part because I'm not going to need it, and get rid of that. So let's do a Control S and save what we've got so far. I'm going to grab that selection tool and go grab the bottom of my acorn and bring it over. So I have kind of the world's wonkiest looking acorn right now. Um, what I can do is hit Alt or Option and you can go ahead and pull, oh, come on, pull the corner and it'll kind of size the whole thing over and that's okay. We're going to make it so we um, arrange it. So let's go ahead and grab the, our acorn top and let's do a, on your properties panel, do a range and let's go ahead and bring that top to the front. So now I've got kind of the top of my element over the, uh, the bottom. So that's exactly what I want so far. Well, minus the fact it's kind of weird looking, but that's okay. So let's go ahead and drag across both items and let's fix a few things. So let's go ahead and go to the fill color box and set that fill to none. So now you're going to see we've got kind of a, another bit of a problem in that now we can see uh, what's behind there. So we're going to go ahead and play with our shape builder tool again. So we're going to go grab our shape tool builder. And this time we want to combine these two sections. So I'm just going to go within here. Oops. All right, I've got it selected. All right, come one more time. So I'm going to select the whole thing. I've got my shape builder. And I'm going to select from here to here, so I grab those two. You, you'll see now that I've got one single shape. Don't drag it into the bottom, otherwise you're just going to turn it into a really wonky bobber, bobbin, uh, bobber for fishing. Let's go ahead and do a Control S and save what we've got so far, and leave that selected. We're going to go ahead and turn our strange acorn into a symbol, so we can use it over and over again. So in order to do that, we're going to have our selection tool. We're going to go to Window and come down to symbols. In there we're going to go ahead and do a new symbol which is the little plus sign at the bottom. It's going to say what is your new symbol called? We're going to call it an acorn. And we want to go ahead and have it dynamic symbol because that way if we change it we can do things. Um, it'll change them all at once. And let's go ahead and say OK. So now I've got my acorn over here so let's go ahead and grab my acorn and drag a couple more over here onto my artboard. So now I have three acorns. And that's enough acorns, so I'm going to go ahead and close that up. And now what we're going to do? We're going to go take this acorn, we're going to go just the outside of it and rotate it just a little bit. And let's go grab the other one and rotate it just a bit too. You can always go back and change those later. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we want to change just the stroke of the bottom. But now I've got three of them, so how do I do that? The best part, the best way is to edit the original acorn. So what we're going to do is click on the stroke for the bottom. So we're going to click on the bottom. We're going to double click that red path and it's going to say yes, you're about to edit the definition, say yes. I'm going to go back here and get grab just the bottom and I want to go ahead and change the color. So I'm going to go here into my stroke color box, into my color mixer, and I want it to be cyan 2, tab magenta 44, yellow 26, and black is 0. I'm going to hit enter and make that say. And now I want to go ahead and do my arrange. I want to make sure it's send to back, so it's always tucked behind there. And let's go ahead and double click an area outside. And you'll see that all of your acorns changed all at once. So that's one of the beauties of using it as a symbol um, and not having to go back through. Let's go ahead and do a control S and save what we have so far. Let's go ahead and how many pages do we have left? We still have quite a bit left. So I'm going to go ahead and break this into a second video. And we'll pick back up here in a minute.